Hi, Fruity Cutie. What's up? My name is Jeanette, also known as Misfit Vegan. I have a slight watermelon obsession, but you can obviously tell that. Today is a bit of a serious episode because we're going to be talking about binge eating, which is something that I suffered from severely from the age of 13 to the age of 26. And I'm going to give you the three things that cured my binge eating. But before we get into that, I was going to say binge eating disorder because that's what I had, my binge eating disorder. And before we get into the three things, I want to tell you why you're binging because this will help you to, you know, become aware. And I always say to my clients, awareness is the first step in the healing process, okay? And so number one, you are binging most likely because you are trying to find a way to relieve stress, okay? Um stress is something that we all have no matter what you're dealing with. I mean, whether you're a millionaire or you're homeless, you have stress in your life. Um, No matter what age you are, no matter where you live in the world, you have stress. And you're always going to have stress. And there's always going to be a need for something in your life to help alleviate that stress. So right now, you might be using something that is healthy like tapping, EFT, or yoga, or walking, or journaling, or therapy, or talking, um, you know, to a loved one or to a family member or friend. Um, There are many dancing, there are many healthy ways to relieve stress, but there are also a lot of unhealthy ways to relieve, relieve stress, and binge eating is one of them. And so you might be in the habit, this is important, please pay attention to this, you might be in the habit of relieving your stress through eating, through binge eating specifically. And so what I need you to do is I need you to understand that this is happening. This will help you in the healing process. Awareness is the first step in the healing process. You may be using binge eating to relieve stress. Okay, that's number one. Like, you know, just having a moment where you can say, fuck it, and you do what you want, and you let yourself go, and you don't think, um, and you don't think about your problems, and you don't have to worry. It's the only time in your day that you might not worry. Okay. Number two. Number two is that you... Or might be using food to feel in control. There's a lot of things in our life that we are not in control of, but, um, and you might be doing all four of these. I was. Um, eating and what you put into your mouth is in your control. I know this sounds counterintuitive. This sounds like it's not true because if you are a binge eater, then you know that you don't feel in control, you feel completely out of control. And the truth is, and logically you can understand this, you are in control. You are in complete control of what you're eating. And I know that sucks to hear because it feels like there's no way. Like the real you would never eat this food. The real you would never eat like this and this amount and this, you know, portions and this kind of food. But that's not true. The real you is doing it. You are in control of what you're eating. And so, you know, if your life feels like it's totally out of control, um, side note, if you're having dreams where your teeth are falling out, you might feel subconsciously like your life is out of control. I used to have these dreams all the time. So one part of your life that is in your control is your food and your eating choices. So you might be binging to feel in control. The third thing you might be doing is you might be eating and binging to feel present. It feels very, very good to feel present. And so when you are eating, and I can, I'm can, i speaking from experience here. So when I say you, I mean I. I was, when I was eating, I was feeling like nothing else mattered. I was present. I was in the moment and I was enjoying myself for the first time all day and I was feeling in control and I wasn't feeling my pain. I wasn't feeling all the hurt and the sadness and the loneliness and the depression and I was feeling present and all that mattered was that food and all that was was that food. That's all there was. That's all there is and it was just such a nice feeling physically and emotionally and mentally to just 
stop thinking about my problems and about my life and about everything that was fucked up and just to be focused on that food. There's some tips that I'm going to give you and some things that you can do instead, but as you can tell, um, another you can, you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, another way that I could feel present is to meditate, which I know meditation doesn't give you the same release, the same dopamine hit, the same estrogen that overeating junk food gives you, but meditation, um, and you can meditate on your bike, you can meditate walking, you can meditate during yoga, you can meditate, you know, sitting down, just sitting, you can meditate on the treadmill, but meditation will also give you that feeling, but we'll talk about that later. Um, And number four is to feel nothing. You might be binge eating to not feel. So you might be doing all four of these. You might be doing binge eating to feel one of these, but most likely it's at least one of these things. And I know that telling you that it's in your control feels very unfair because it doesn't feel like you're in control, but you are. You are. I'm here to let you know or to remind you that this is a learned behavior. Binge eating is a learned behavior. And you know what that fucking means, boo? That means you can unlearn it. I I wrote a whole book on this. It's called, I have it here, Raw Vegan Excuses. You can definitely find a lot of the solutions in this book. But I wrote down some notes. So let me just see where I wrote them down. The three things that helped me tremendously. Okay, so let me just put this here. And this is not an overnight process. You're not going to stop binging overnight. I wish I could tell you that you were going to. You're not. Sorry, I'm trying to put my notebook so it stands up. Um, This is going to be a habit that we're going to break. And the only way to really break a habit is to replace it with another one. So my number one tip that I can give you, but listen, there's a lot of hope here because again, you weren't born binging. It was a learned behavior. It's something that you learned in order to help you deal with life. It's a stress reliever. It's a way of coping. It's a way of comforting yourself. And you can learn new ways to do that. That's what I did. I have been binge free for over 13 years. And it's a fucking miracle. And it feels very strange because I never thought in a million years that I could go a day without binging. You know, imagine doing something. Wow. Sorry. I just realized that I had binge eating disorder for 13 years from the age of 13 to 26. And I've been free from it for 13 years. I just realized that. And um, it feels like yesterday that I was, you know, sitting at the fridge, you know, because what would happen is everybody would go to sleep in my house and I would go to the fridge and I would start eating and I couldn't stop. And I would eat really, really late at night. And it helped me sleep. I couldn't sleep without binging every night, every night. And it was horrible. And um, it was a big secret. And binge eating also happens mostly when you are alone and when you spend a lot of time alone. And so here are my three tips, okay? Let me get into them. The number one thing is you have to change your state. When you feel like binging, when you feel a binge coming on, which there is a great way to prevent this, which is to eat an abundance of fruit. Eating an abundance of fresh, ripe, juicy, delicious, really good tasting, yummy fruit is going to help you not to binge because you're not going to be so hungry that you feel out of control. The reason why the fruit, the high fruit raw vegan diet works for me um, is because it helped me to finally feel not starving and feel satiated and feel in control of my food choices because I wasn't starving all day. I wasn't trying to do a low calorie diet. I wasn't trying to, you know, cut my carbs. I wasn't starving myself. And then once you starve yourself long enough, you feel like you can't, you're out of control. You're so hungry. You'll eat anything. And you do, you eat anything and everything. And so eating a fruit-based diet has helped me to not have that feeling anymore. But I also had to do these three things. Number one, I had to change my state. I had to learn how to change my state. And so I would like to inspire you to write a list of things that you can do 
to change your state. It's very important that these things have to be totally free and available to you at any time. Okay, they have to be free and avail- available to you at any time. So for example, going for a walk, going for a walk or going to the gym, just like walking to the gym, maybe going to the gym for five, 10 minutes. I'm not joking. Um, going to the library or um, playing with your dog, taking your dog on a walk is great if you have a dog. Um, putting on some headphones and locking the bathroom door if you live with other people and just dancing, having a playlist and dancing. Um, Yeah, if you have a bike, getting on your bike. Something you can do at any time, anywhere you are, okay, and for free. And so the putting on your headphones and dancing to music is probably the most realistic one as far as when you're traveling. That can be really helpful. You have to have a playlist. You have to have songs that you love to dance to. You have to have them ready. And this list is something that's going to have to be like present and available to you at any time. So I would recommend you write a list, you print it out or you write it beautifully on a piece of paper and you put it on your fridge or you put it in your bathroom or you put it in your room or you put it on your phone, you put it somewhere you're going to be able to see it immediately to remind yourself, oh yeah, I can do this instead. And it's not going to work every time, but it might work nine out of 10 times, and that's better than nothing. It might work one out of 10 times, and that's better than nothing. It's not an overnight fix. You know, recovering from binge eating disorder is a very difficult, but if I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do it, but you have to become aware and you have to start taking steps in the right direction. So that's number one, change your state. You can do jumping jacks. You can do push-ups. Those are not exactly enjoyable. The best state changers are the ones that are actually enjoyable to you. So putting on music and dancing it was one of my absolute favorite ones. Going for a walk, going on my bike, getting out the house. Now to change my state, sometimes I just walk to the gym. I go in, I go on the treadmill or the Stairmaster for 10 minutes and I leave. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? But you have to understand that I work from home a lot and sometimes... I will want to feel like binging again. It's just a, it's a very deep, deep neuro pathway. And so I've learned how, and I would never binge anymore because that's just not an option anymore because now I have learned how to do other things that help to change my state. I start getting into like a depressed state or I start getting into an anxiety state or I start feeling really stressed. I will get my shoes on and I will go on my bike and I'll bike for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. You know, it doesn't have to be a whole hour, a whole week, you know, a whole fucking afternoon thing, but I need to change my state in order to change my mood. And um, that's what binge eating is probably doing for you also. That's like the fifth thing. It's helping you change your state. We're just looking for state changers and some are very unhealthy, like binge eating, like getting high, like drinking alcohol. We're just looking for state changers. And so you need healthier state changers. Okay. Number two is to connect. Remember, addiction thrives in isolation. Addiction thrives in isolation. So if you have a food addiction and if you have a binge eating disorder, then you're probably doing this in isolation. You're probably not connecting when you need to connect. So I would highly recommend you reach out if possible You write a list of five people you can call and reach out to when you feel like binging. And this will totally, it will revolutionize your life. You can also do something really cool, which is what I have done. You can set up appointments with people. So choose a friend, one or two friends where you can have lunch or dinner with them on Zoom if you don't live close by. If you live close by, even better, even better. Okay. So you can schedule a dinner every single every single Tuesday, you know, at 7 p.m. You have dinner with this friend. And so that will also help you throughout the week so that you know that that's coming up and you're going to have that connection time, okay? We must connect to get out of our habit of binge eating. I know it's probably not something you want to do because you've gotten in the habit of isolation and in in the habit of not, you know, 
being social, in the habit of not connecting. But I would highly recommend you start to connect and you set up appointments with people. I love doing this so that like, because I don't trust myself to reach out. I'm not of social person. I'm not somebody who reaches out to people naturally. And so doing this has helped me tremendously to have that like assurance that I'm always going to have social time. I do this. I did this with Misfit Mondays. So if you're part of my, you know, private community, then you know that we meet every single Monday at 7 p.m. And I really, really like this time because it's like, it's one of the few times that I'm social. And even though it's on Zoom, I'm with you know, 20, 30 other people from all around the world. We have 600 members, but not everybody shows up to the meeting. But uh, we have a QA, and a It's called a connection call. Okay, my friend Brianna, she coined the term connection call. And what we do is we connect with each other and that connection helps me to not binge. Okay, it's not about the food. It's about everything else. And it's about the amount of connection you're having in your life, you know, A lot of times I remember I used to binge because I didn't want to feel depressed. I didn't want to feel lonely. You know, a better way to not feel depressed and not feel lonely is to connect with other people. A much healthier way is to do that. Okay, and number three I wrote down is have fruit that you love in the house in abundance. It's easier said than done, but one of the fruits that really saved my life, seriously, is bananas. Got lots of bananas there. Um, bananas is something that was my go-to and it's still my go-to when I wanted to binge. Okay. So when I wanted to binge, I would make banana nice cream. Bananas are super cheap. You put them in the freezer. They last forever in there. And what you can do is you can just blend them up with some vanilla bean or mango is one of my favorites or some cacao or some, what's another one I like? I like, mm, I like, pineapple and shredded coconut sometimes. So like a pina colada, nice cream, but mainly my favorite one was cacao. So dates, bananas, cacao in the blender. So amazing. And, um, I used to do that a lot and also frozen bananas, frozen mangoes. You can't beat that. It's so freaking good. And that is not a solution to the binge eating. That's not a long-term solution, but it definitely works. Um, go for, you want to binge? Okay. Make some nice cream. Make a big, big bowl of nice cream and it's going to help you tremendously. Make a very big bowl. I'm talking about eight to 10 bananas, one or two cups of mangoes and a splash of water. You want to put some hemp seeds in there to make it thick and creamy. You can do that. And um, this really helped me in the beginning, especially when I was trying to break the habit. Okay. So oftentimes you are not just going to be able to, you know, call somebody and like get outside the house. You're going to need to eat because honestly, I feel like a lot of times I binged because I was hungry and I was just trying to not eat. I was trying to not eat. I was trying to starve myself. I really wanted to be skinny. I always wanted to, you know, I, I just wanted to like feel worthy and good enough. And so I thought that if I was skinny, I would feel good enough. I would feel pretty. I would feel worthy. I would, I would be, you know, just like desirable and good enough and you know just trying to feel worthy and a lot of us are trying to be skinny to feel worthy trying to be fit to feel worthy trying to be beautiful to feel worthy the truth is is that when you're born you are born worthy you don't have to be beautiful you don't have to be smart you don't have to make money. You don't have to be talented. You're worthy. You were born worthy and you cannot do anything about that. You were born enough. You'll always be enough, but you have to realize that. And that takes time and that takes therapy. And I'm in therapy too, boo. Like, <laughs> hello, that's the biggest problem with this world. We don't feel good enough. And so those are the three things that helped me tremendously. Learning how to change my state in a healthy way. I now do yoga every single day so I can get in a good state before I get in a bad state. Okay, a lot of times prevention is the cure. Okay, prevention is the cure for everything. Prevention is the cure for cancer, not early detection. And an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Okay, if you know, you know. Prevention is the key. And so prevention in the form of getting into a good state right away, doing yoga first thing in the morning, getting out of the house, going for a walk, journaling, 
um, reading, you know, putting on music that I love, putting on an audiobook that I love, getting into a positive mindset. That's number one. Number two is to connect. I have connection calls with people every Monday at 7 p.m. If you'd like to join us, I'll leave the link below. And I also have connection calls and Zooms with people that I love, my friends and people that I really like to talk to and that help me and make me feel good. And hopefully I can make them feel good as well. And then number three is to have an abundance of fruit in your house. Okay. You probably know because you probably watch my channel. Um, Hopefully. If not, please subscribe. Um, I am a raw vegan. I've I've been eating a fruit-based diet for the past 13 years. And that means I have not eaten any cooked food at all since 2011. And actually, I think 2010. Um, No, I started February 2011. So yeah, since January, February, yeah, 2011, I have not eaten cooked food. And that's a long time. Um, And the reason is because raw food has revolutionized my entire life. It has changed my body, my mind, my spirit, my hair, my skin. I lost over 60 pounds. I used to have cystic acne. No more. No more, boo. I'm not wearing any face makeup. I am wearing a little bit of eyeshadow and some mascara because I want to look good for you guys. But um, it got rid of my IBS It got rid of my migraine migraine headaches, which I used to suffer from really badly. Um, I mean, if you've had a migraine, then you know it is life debilitating. You cannot do anything, all right? At least when you have like the flu or when you have a stomach bug, you can think. When you have a migraine, you cannot even think. You can't do anything. So it really, really ruins your life. And I'm so grateful every single day that I don't have migraines anymore. Um, It got rid of my eczema that was all over my body. A raw food diet changed my life and I'm never going back. And it also helped me grow my hair and it also helped me just look and feel my best and get rid of all health issues, back pain, knee pain, all types of issues gone. I have not gotten sick since 2011. I haven't taken antibiotics since 2011, 2010. Um, uh, And uh, Yeah. So I would love for you to try it out. If you need help, then I can help you. I am a coach, of course, um, because I don't have any other skill, honestly, besides eating a raw vegan diet and helping other people to learn how to eat a raw vegan diet in this world. This world is set up not for health. It's not set up for healthy food to be convenient. And so we have to make it happen. And so if you'd like to learn how to be a raw vegan, a healthy raw vegan, You can check out my course. We start this week. It's called the Food Addiction Freedom Course, and it's for 10 women only. We have two spots left. And if you're interested, I'll send you all the details and the application to see if this course is for you. It's six weeks long, but I I urge you to only, only sign up for it if you're serious. I need you. I need you to come to the Zooms. We do a Zoom every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I make you sign a contract, okay? I will be asking you what you're eating every day. I will ask you to move your body every day. I will actually make you do it because that's my job. And I also will take you on a journey where you're going to learn everything you need to know in order to be happy and healthy and finally give up the binge eating. There is no reason that you should be suffering in this lifetime. This life is short. It's like this. It's so short. And I want you to get the body and the life and the skin and the hair and the confidence of your dreams. I don't want you to be suffering. You deserve to thrive. You deserve to feel good in your body. And so if you're willing to work for it, I'm willing to work with you for it. I love you, boo. Thank you for watching this. You can do this. If I can stop binging, trust me, you can stop binging. But you got to learn how. And everything is hard before you know how to do it. There's nothing wrong with you. You can unlearn this habit. Don't forget what I said. Binging is a learned habit. And if you can learn something, you can also unlearn it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Give it a thumb if you like this kind of content. I'll leave the information below for the course and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, boo.